The Dragon Lord Legacy Chapter 5 Ascension Spike along with Ember and her two horde members Smolder and Amethyst waited as the elders made their way back to them, with both of Spike's mothers looking like as if they were just receiving terrible news. In a sense, it may have been the case. Um, mom? Mother? Both female elders looked at their son, surrounded by his horde, in time. Ember looked stoic, much like her father, but she knew that what may happen next, Spike needed her more than ever. What's going on? He asked, almost innocently. Thoughts of confusion and hesitation filled his voice, however. Elienza was the first to break the ice, though her own voice betrayed sadness and guilt. We... we have spoken, Spike. She motioned towards his mom and Torch. The two giant dragons looked almost just the same as his mother, though Zynthia was less guilty and more worried while Torch was... Uh, Torch. His face didn't really give much else. We have spoken, she said. And it was decided that we need to tell you everything about you. Your past, your history, how you came to be here. He got the gist of why he was here by Ember. The trials, the lie, the truth, and so on. But to hear it from his mother, that was something else. What about my past? He asked her. Once more, Elienza was hesitant, which irked Torch, who growled. Spike, where you are originally from is not here in the Dragonlands. You are from a faraway land, raised by non-dragons, and only came here to save my daughter from an ill-gotten fate. The truth rang in Spike's head, but that may have just been Torch's loud voice. Both of his mothers flinched, but they also looked more guilty than before. Torch pressed on. You come from the land of ponies. Ponies who hatched, raised, and cared for you, up until near a year ago when you came here to be my daughter's consort. The trials we put you through had sent you into a catatonic state. He snorted, releasing a puff of smoke from his nostril, then focusing on his mother's. They took you in, kept you safe until you would have awakened. His mood slightly dropped, focusing back onto the purple and green drake. Your memory loss. It was a factor that we have not considered. Spike could feel every eye focused on him, waiting for his reaction towards all of this. Torch was blunt, to the point and held nothing back, and yet none of his mothers denied everything. Instead, they nodded slowly with guilty eyes while Ember just held him close. His mind was racing millions of miles in seconds with his eyes staring blankly out. Was not born nor raised by dragons. A land of ponies from far away. Lost his memories due to his mother. He had no real mother and father or any parental figure. What did he have? A squeeze in his claws made him look down to see his claws wrapped with embers. He looked at her, seeing worry on her own features. Had it gone too far? Was it just right to unleash all this upon him without proof or warning? He realized that despite everything, he knew that it was all done in vain. He needed the trials to become a proper mate for Ember. He suffered and endured them all to be worthy for the eyes of other dragons. Two of the dragons that had harmed before made it their duty to take him in. They could have let him go, like most parents, he had found out, and just let him suffer. But they cared for him when he was in a coma, even dealing with his molts and did their best to keep him safe. Waking up, he only knew that they were his parents. They lied, they manipulated, and only they told him what they wanted to keep his mind sane. Yet, he felt content with them, treating him as if he was their flesh and blood. The care and love they gave him, the warmth and joy that surrounded him, that was no lie. That was love. That was care. Despite the manipulated stance they did, the love was all true. Which is why he didn't really hate them. No. But that did leave something out that really bothered him with his black-scaled mother. Why didn't you tell me that you could read or manipulate minds? His eye focused solely on Elienza. Her deep purple eyes stared at him with fear. Why didn't you say anything about your abilities? She was 
at a loss of words. Even her mate had some trouble finding words to back her up. When Elianza spoke, she sounded fearful, almost expecting rejection from him. I... I... I didn't manipulate you to believing that we loved you or cared for you. That was all true. He shook his head. I know that you did. A brief appreciating smile appeared on his muzzle, easing part of her heart. That love... That love was true, but why didn't you want me to learn about your mind, powers, or whatever they're called? They... They weren't relevant, son. Spoke up Zynthia. Eliensa's gifts aren't needed to be mentioned often. Most dragons respect or fear her because of them. Any conversation has no merit with her abilities to be spoken of. Along with that, added Torch, her abilities are meant to only be used on the most extreme cases or when information is needed. Information needed? asked Spike. Like reading a mind and pulling it out? He paused, another memory coming back to him. You wanted to know of my past? It almost came out as a question, but spoke in a tone of an accusation. Again, there was no malice in his voice, but things were starting to connect into his mind that made this a bit more harder to understand his mother's full intentions. Eliensa nodded, though she swallowed whatever lie she wanted to spew. I... as... as a part of the trials, I had to make sure that the mate, Ember, was going to be with was worthy and not going to steal off with her horde or usurp her throne. If she chose you as a simple consort or a horde member, the trials were moot, otherwise you would be chosen as an elder, advisor, successor, or guardian. There was a pause after she said guardian, but she pushed on. But again, the trials are the only time my abilities are used. Spike absorbed all of that information, understanding the parts of only using them for needs like that. However, it didn't stop this question from coming up. Why can't you use it to restore my memories then? A heavy flinch came from the surrounding dragons, and he felt a cold shiver run through his spine, and Torch answered, I wish for your mother to do so for you. He noticed their harsh but tense glare, but just brushed it off. Time is of the essence, Spike. Your presence in Equestria is needed. Spike was in a dilemma between asking more questions on his past, his mother's abilities, or what it is so important that he had to return to the ponies, who helped raise him. But first and foremost, he wanted his past back. Turning to Eliensa, he stared at his mother. Do it. His voice was uneven, but determined. The black-scaled dragoness quickly shook her head. No, no, we have to do this slowly. Rushing it could damage your mind permanently. We do not have the time, Eliensa, warned Torch, his voice betraying his command. As is, the equestrians are seeking asylum and passage to see him, and judging by the year of constant patrols from their guards, the waiting has gone far enough. He then nodded towards Spike. Give him his memories back. Eliensa was torn. As a mother not finding comfort in hurting her hatchling, or as her duty to doing what was best, her heart thumped with uncertainty. Her only comfort was her taller, scarlet lover brushing against her, trying to ease her worry. We need to do this. For his sake. She whispered to her. She looked down at Spike, still seeing determination. Small traces of fear, but something was different. Unlike before, during the trials, Spike had no one to support him. No lover standing next to him, no friends, no family, nothing. He was on his own when she used her abilities to use them on him. Now, Ember held his claws in hers. Next to her side was her horde Smolder and Amethyst, both of them acting as her backbone and support for Spike. Her lover had her tail surrounding them, as if protecting them. Torch himself was standing ready to give support if needed. Lastly, her own love for Spike was there since the beginning of taking him a year back. The trial he endured alone, but this trial, this was his final trial, and it would be the greatest one he would ever face. With a sigh and a nod, she leaned down. All right. Okay, my son. I will, I will do it. She paused. I believe that this time, though, you can handle it. She gave a smile and motioned to the others. You have them for support. 
Spike felt his claws wrapped with ember, but he kept his determination, looking into the eyes of his mother. I'm ready, mother. She gave a small smile, but felt turmoil. She inhaled softly, breathing in as much air as possible, closing her eyes, then she exhaled. Her eyes opened up once more and a bright violet glow came from them. Spike's eyes were immediately caught into their glow, and Ember held tightly to his claw, letting him know that she was still there. The other dragons watched as Spike nor Eliensa hadn't moved, their eyes meeting each other but never blinking. Ember knew that Eliensa's abilities allowed her to see into the minds of any that she wanted, but she also knew that she could read their minds, their intentions, and go as far as manipulate a dragon against their will. But all this could happen in seconds or minutes, while in the mindscape, as Eliensa called it once before. That would be hours in there, memories, history, and such playing quickly and rapidly at such speed that Spike suddenly slumped, his body almost heaving forward, and Eliensa blinked, breathing out of her glow. She blinked rapidly, trying to get her vision to focus, before her eyes focused on Spike, widening in panic. Something is wrong. Just as she said that, Spike began heaving, clutching his stomach while leaning forward. Every dragon looked in distress as Spike began to cough violently, small wisps of flames leaving him. Ember held him, bringing him close. Eliensa watched her son, once again being affected by her abilities. She growled and snapped at Torch. I told you, he wasn't even ready! She roared at Torch. The bigger dragon didn't argue, and worry filled his own heart. Ember was important to him, and if something else happened to Spike, she would die. Maybe literally. Ember couldn't do anything but watch as Spike continued to heave or cough up violently. Until, he gagged once before a huge burst of flames left his mouth, engulfing the area in a bright emerald flame. And a scroll appeared. Spike slumped forward and the scroll fell to the ground with a light thunk. Ember caught him, bringing him gently to his knees while he tried to regain his breath. The others watched as he regained his sense, but were too confused at the scroll landing before them. Silence reigned between them all, but it was Smolder who broke it. Um, what in Mother Wistola was that? She asked out loudly, pointing to the scroll onto the floor. Ember checked on Spike, seeing that his breathing was back to normal before she focused on the scroll as well. Her eyes went wide as she saw the stamp and a violet bind around it. It's... it's from Princess Twilight. A heavy silence then followed, with the dragons in all different states of emotions. Eliensa was still worried for her son, though the letter was intriguing. Like her maid, Zynthia found herself curiously looking at the scroll on the floor, intrigued at the unique way of sending an item over. The care for her son was first and foremost, but the idea behind the delivery very, very peculiar. Torch was actually at ease for once, his heart settling as Ember hadn't lost the one that she loved, though his mind still wandered towards the dropped scroll. Why would they send a scroll through him? How is that even possible? Ember was about to speak, but it was Spike who reached the scroll, seeing the band. Because... because that's how I, I talked to Twilight and the other princesses through messages. His voice was hoarse, but he kept trying to clear it, coughing here and there. No one said anything, his focus was still on the scroll in his claws. He sighed. It feels like forever since I had to cough out these. Well, more like <laughs> burp it out. It was Amethyst who actually broke the tension with a sharp laugh. Well, that's a great way of sending messages, and a greeting. The others regarded her for a moment, and Spike gave a small chuckle and slowly stood up. I, I think that... I think if Twilight sent me a letter, she must know that I'm awake. A vivid detail in the dream he had, it was pony-shaped in the figure, was memorable. Luna. She probably had alerted Twilight. He pulled onto the purple bind, letting the scroll unroll. The three words were simply posted into the middle. Are... you awake? He sighed and turned to everyone. His eyes were focused, emerald color staring at all of them, waiting for a confirmation that he had gained his memories back. Spike? Ember asked, unsure if he was all there. He gave her a look, smiling lightly before bringing her close and blew a kindle across her face. I love you, Dragon Lord Ember. A tear fell from Ember. With a smile wide upon her muzzle, she instantly hugged her returned mate 
tightly.